drink into a super soda fountain. Make your own model eardrum. Find out why yawning is so contagious. And the secret to super fast skiing. Oh, super skiing, I can't wait for that. I don't want to be rude, but something smells around here. Well, it's not me, that's for sure. So it can only be... Oh, uh, Daisy. Daisy! It's bath time for Daisy. Stay there, girl. Come on, come on. Better get things organised, Jade. She's not too keen on her bath. Why is she trying to get out? I wonder how cold it is. It's freezing. No wonder she wants to get out. Oh, she's gone. Now we'll have to top it up before we get Daisy back. Tap water should be fine. Hey, this water's warm. I guess the hose is lying in the sun. That gives me an idea. Why don't we make a solar hot water bath for Daisy? <laughs> Side of an ear. First, I'll cover this cake tin in a sheet of plastic sandwich wrap and tape it in place. It's like a drum. An eardrum, that is. Now I draw in two bendy straws and use some tape to make a right angle bend. Like this. I'll cut into one end of the straws, making a few thin strips. And I tape those around the ball like fingers holding on tight. Now the straw arm gets taped to the skin of my eardrum. And I put the whole thing in two bowls like this. The ping pong ball sits in the water. Now here's the cool bit. Watch what happens to the ping pong ball when my eardrum hears the noise. The sound vibration from my hands shakes the water. It's like a giant ear. In a real ear, sound waves vibrate against the eardrum, which sends the vibrations along three tiny bones into the cochlea. The cochlea is full of fluid, just like a bowl of water. It's lined with tiny hairs that turn the vibrations into nerve signals. Our brains interpret those signals as different sounds. So Damon, when you put your earphones into your ears, they're very close to your eardrum. Like this. If they're too loud, whoops, the eardrum can break. So keep it down when you rock out, man. Now I just need to fix his taste in music. Oh dear, I get the impression Emily thinks poor old Damon's music is pretty much on the nose. And so is Daisy. Let's hope bath time's not too far away. OK, this might take a bit of work, but Daisy definitely needs a warm bath, not a freezing one. This length of black plastic garden hose will be perfect. Now we'll need one end in the water near the top of the bath. Tape it down so it doesn't flick out. There. And with most of the coil in the sun, we'll put the other end back in the bath, but right at the bottom. I can feel the sun heating the black hose already. OK, we need the water to flow out of the bath, then through the pipe and back into the bath. So I'm going to suck on the bottom end. That'll get the water started. There! It's coming out! Now quickly down to the bottom of the bath. And the water is now circulating around the pipe. Grace has cleverly used the pipe as a siphon. After Grace has sucked the water all the way through the pipe, air pressure keeps forcing the water up the pipe and gravity keeps pulling it downward. That makes the higher water in the bath flow to the lower part, but via the entire length of the pipe. 
OK, let's leave the water to keep circulating and heating in the sun. So cool! But boy, it's thirsty work. Oh, we're just about trampolined out. Time for a drink. Red and fizzy. So refreshing. And so are these chewy mints. Hmm. I think I'll have another. I'll leave the drawing for Lara. Hang on. I reckon I can lob this in Lara's glass. Shot! Hey, look at the glass! Fizzing like crazy. I wonder why. Hmm. I'm gonna try something. Let's put lots of mints in this bottle. I'll get Lara to roll up one of her pages. Yep, that'll make a nice minty tunnel. Now we'll fill it right up with mints. Unscrew the bottle. And in they go. Wow. It's a full-on fountain! Cool! A volcano in a bottle! Soft drinks get their fizziness from bubbles of carbon dioxide gas. They're trapped in the soft drink by water molecules that cling together and surround the tiny bubbles of gas. But the mints contain a chewy substance called gum arabic. The gum breaks the bonds that keep the molecules together. The water molecules can then no longer hold the gas bubbles, so they're released all at once, making a spectacular soda fountain. Wow! I never thought a soft drink could spurt that high. I think it's even inspired our jumping. Back to the trampoline. Oh, yeah, I've got to try that one. Stand back, Dana. These mints are about to go down the slippery slope. Oh, no. I think it's time we went to a much less messy sort of slippery slope. Oh, no. Tanner's got past me again. How does he do that? It's not fair. He always seems to go faster down the ski slopes than I do. Lost again. He must have a secret weapon he's not telling me about. And I'm going to find out what it is. I'll just have a little sneaky peek in his bag. Here's something. It's a stick of wax. Could wax really make a ski more slippery on the snow? There's only one way to find out. I'll take my two unwaxed skis and rub this wax on the bottom of one of them. I need to make sure that the whole ski is covered. There, that should do it. Now I'll take them to the top of a slope and put them next to each other. The wax ski is in my left hand. Hey! The one with wax on it is going faster. Watch out, Tanner. Your secret is out. You're right, Natalie. Because the water molecules in snow and ice don't stick to wax, waxing a ski reduces the amount of friction between the ski and the water molecules under it. Less friction means a faster skier. Woohoo! Catch me if you can, Tanner! I win! Looks like I am the true champion after all! <laughs> reading time with friends. <sighs> hmm, Zach's been yawning a lot today. <gasps> now Beck's yawning too. Strange. <gasps> That's weird. I don't know why I'm yawning. I'm not tired at all. <sighs> Maybe it's contagious. <sighs> Even hiding behind the book doesn't stop it. <sighs> oh no! Everyone's yawning. Now I'm stuck with the yawns too. I really need to test what's making us yawn. I know just the thing. Right, I'll get Beck and Zach to look at this picture book about the boy who couldn't stop yawning. Hmm. 
Uh, yep, Beck died to yawn. Uh, now uh, Zach is too. How funny! Just looking at pictures of yawning gets some boys going. Uh, uh, One popular theory is that we yawn to take in more oxygen and get rid of excess carbon dioxide. Another is that yawning is like stretching. It gives our jaw and face muscles a good workout. And as for why yawning is contagious, that remains one of the great mysteries of the mind. OK, back to the book club. Oh, dear. They're doing homework. <sighs> now that's really worthy of a big yawn. <laughs> oh, it makes me yawn just thinking about yawning. Me too. But we can't go to sleep on the job now because it's getting pretty close to Daisy's bath time. Let's see if Daisy's bath is warm enough to tempt her back. I'll measure the temperature here where the water's returning. That's long enough. OK, 18 degrees Celsius. That's nearly 65 Fahrenheit. Now, as our water keeps going around our solar heater pipe, our dog bath should gradually get warmer. Grace's idea is exactly how solar hot water systems work. As sunlight shines on the black pipe, it absorbs the heat. The pipe gets hotter and the water running along the warm pipe surface begins to heat up. As the bath water keeps making the circuit, it gets warmer and warmer. OK, let's test the water temperature now. Wow, 24 degrees Celsius. That's 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Fantastic! Even fussy old Daisy will be happy with that. Let's get it. In she goes. Whoops! Whoops! Sorry, Days. But you're going to love the warm water. Now she's enjoying it. Yep, Daisy thinks solar heated water is the ultimate in pooch pampering. Oh, lovely. Now I don't mind smelling the daisies of the doggy world. We could take her anywhere now. Just as well, because we've come to the end of another show. See, See you next time. time.